ducking and dodging. Days after media cabinet briefings were cancelled, another press briefing also cancelled. This as the Prime Minister was whisked away when confronted by reporters. Plus, the former state minister for immigration speaking out against what he's calling victimization. Quite frankly, he says it stinks. And then bus drivers still in limbo. They say months have passed and yet still no word from their transportation minister on a fair increase. And then in our news at 7.30. The deputy leader of the Free National Movement brought in by top brass of the police force. We'll tell you why. These details and more as our news live at 7 starts right now. This is our news live at 7. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Megan Shepard. The prime minister rushed away by protocol officers when questioned by the press yesterday evening. It came after this week's press briefing was called off just three days after it was revealed that cabinet briefings would be canceled for a combined, more comprehensive Q&A. Brittany McDermott fills us in. Days after the Office of the Prime Minister cancelled Cabinet Day questions for a more comprehensive press briefing, Thursday's briefing was cancelled and the Prime Minister whisked away by protocol officers when questioned about a shakeup at the Department of Immigration. The move came after a press conference with Botswana's president wrapped up a state visit to the Bahamas. During the presser, reporters were encouraged to only ask questions strictly to the event and not to any other issues. We will now invite questions from members of the media. I'd just like to preface that question and answer session, though, by asking that you restrict your questions to those related to this official visit. However, during the Q&A, Botswana's press asked their president other questions relating to their national issues. On Monday, our news got word that cabinet briefings would be cancelled. The note from OPM said there will be a combined comprehensive weekly briefing to promote efficiency. But that didn't happen. On Thursday, reporters were told the prime minister would take two questions following the event. One of those questions was surrounding reports that the top brass at the Department of Immigration will be moved out and a former director moved in. But when asked, this happened. Prime Minister, we were able to also speak on reports of a shakeup at the Immigration Department. There are reports that some people are being Excuse me, sorry. Excuse me, sorry. Thank you. Sorry, excuse the President. Thank you. The Nassau Guardian reported that acting director Couture Ferguson will be placed on leave. The move, which some are chalking up to victimization, comes weeks after leaks highlighted concerns within the department. The Prime Minister was also asked about the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union attaining a strike certificate and the impact it would have on consumers. The Minister is here. The Minister is looking into those issues and I'm sure she will be able to, to respond to you after she's She'll, them, yeah. she'll be speaking with them tomorrow, and she's mandated to ensure that industrial peace and harmony exists at BPL, and I'm sure she'll be able to deliver that. Reporting Power News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Thanks, Berthony. A former politician is speaking out against the removal of Acting Director of Immigration, Katura Forbes, from office, saying she, along with others, should not be victimized for airing grievances. Our Joshua Williams reports. Last week, a local daily reported Acting Director of Immigration Katura Ferguson had been put on leave and offered a retirement package. This decision faced criticism. Former State Minister for Immigration Branville McCartney says he's disappointed in the move, adding that the situation does not help government's image. With her being uh, asked to resign or step down or retire, whatever it is, it stinks. Um, and uh, that... <sighs> I don't think that bodes well for the government. Having worked with Ferguson during his time in office, McCartney says he's found her to be a great resource. I've had the good fortune to work with Katura um, when I was at immigration and uh, found her to be um, an excellent, excellent uh, civil servant in, in the department, uh, someone who was well equipped, who knew her job. And uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, when I went there as a, as a minister, she helped to guide me. <laughs> McCartney says the decision goes in line with the PLP's MO of victimization. Stinks of victimization. Let me put it like that, plain and simple. Stinks of victimization. And the PLP should know better. They should know better. 
because they're known for that. Some suggesting Ferguson was removed from her post after expressing concerns about happenings in the ministry. McCartney says no one should be victimized for speaking out. Anyone who has a concern with a minister or any government official, including the prime minister, should be in a position to express it. Whether they are right or wrong in what they're saying. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. A man accused of killing his friends remains behind bars after Justice Gregory Hilton rejected his bail on Thursday. 21-year-old Norman Toussaint is charged with the murder of Omar Davis Jr. Prosecutors say Davis was visiting Toussaint's home on August 15, 2022, when the friends had an argument. Toussaint allegedly stabbed the 21-year-old multiple times, killing him. Davis's family reported him missing on August 16th after he did not return home. The 21-year-old's body was found in a garbage bag in the trunk of his black Honda Fit on August 16th. The car was parked on East Avenue near Caribbean Liquors, where Toussaint worked. Davis had recently graduated from Central State University with a double degree in accounting and finance. He overcame the odds after witnessing his father's murder at age 12. Meantime, 21 foreign nationals finding themselves on the wrong side of the law this week, accused of various immigration offenses. Arraigned before Acting Chief Magistrate Roberto Reckley, six Haitian nationals and a Colombian national pled guilty to overstaying and were convicted and fined up to $1,500 or served three months at the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services. One of the Haitian nationals also pled guilty to the charge of knowingly attempting to mislead an immigration officer. One Jamaican national also pled guilty to overstay, overstaying. Rather. A Sri Lankan resident pled not guilty to the charge of engaging in gainful occupation. And bus drivers are still continuing to call for a fare increase. Their call comes months after a meeting with Transport Minister Jobeth Colby Davis. The public relations officer for the Bahamas Unified Bus Driver Union says they're still waiting to hear from her on a fare increase for the industry. We are still waiting on the minister to meet us in reference to the bus fares going up. She has taken a back bench and haven't came back to us as yet. We have much more on bus drivers' concerns as well as a response from the transport minister coming up on our news at 7.30. And now it's time for your first look at temperatures. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is standing by in the Weather Center. Greg. Yeah, thanks, Megan, and a happy Friday evening, everybody. Another beautiful day around the islands. Temperatures managed to get up into the low 90s, and we are starting to settle down into the mid to upper 80s right now. Few clouds outside, it's 86. Your winds out of the north, northeast at 7 miles per hour, and it feels like 94 degrees on the outside. Temperatures around the islands right now, 85 in Freeport, 84 over in Marsh Harbor, Abaco, and in Governor's Harbor. We pick up 87s in Alistown, Bimini, and in Nicholstown. Also in Great Harbor Key, Central Bahamas, 85 in Kemp's Bay, Arthurstown, Cat Island, and in Deadman's Key. Georgetown and Coburn Downs in Salvador, you guys are 84. And into the Southeast Bahamas, 85s in Duncan Town, Ragged Island. Delectable Bay, Providentialis, Colonel and Crooked Island, 84, Abrams Bay, 84, and Matthew Town in Nagua, Deep South, you guys are 86 at this hour. Satellite showing, well, we got three systems out there, believe it or not. Uh, Lee is still moving well away from us. It's cleared. Bermuda now heading towards the Canadian Maritime. We also have Margo out there still. Margo is doing a loop into the uh, Central Atlantic. And then we have newly formed Tropical Depression 15 that uh, formed earlier today. It's continuing its track towards the uh, Northwest. Should stay away from most land masses, so we don't uh, anticipate any effects from that. But across the Bahamas, high pressure is dominating our weather, and that high is going to be with us throughout the remainder of the week and into the weekend. So we're looking at some very lovely conditions as well as some warm temperatures. That's your first look at weather. Stick with us. So look at your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, the new energy minister touring the Blue Hills power station. This as workers threaten strike action. Plus, a deeply rooted friendship formed. The official visit for the president of Botswana comes to an end. And in our news at 7.30, on the right track, our Jamila Mizik has an inside look at the Center for Autism and the strides being made in education. These stories and more when our news returns. Parliament is prorogued, ending the first legislative session of the Davis administration. 
It's been two years since the PLP won elections, ushering in a new government. On October 4th, a brand new session of parliament begins with a new governor general, a new speech from the throne, and with it, a blueprint for a new legislative agenda. Stay with our news nightly and follow our news.bs for analysis and insight, and most of all, what's important to you. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. This morning, the new energy minister took a tour of the Blue Hills power station to see for herself the conditions workers are working under. Our Marlena Leonard has that story and an update on the potential strike. The new energy minister, Joe Beth Colby Davis, donning a hard hat, hazard vest and boots for a tour of the Blue Hills power station this morning. And in the midst of a potential Bahamas Electrical Workers Union strike on the horizon, she says the tour served more than one purpose. It's been my first week and it's been a heavy week. Uh -huh. I wanted to make sure that I understand um, the conditions the workers are in and, and the job that they do on behalf of the union people uh, that I have a better and greater appreciation for it. And one of my main concerns when I spoke with him was just health and safety, just because of the industry that I come from, that's a priority. It's always been a priority for us. And so I just want to make sure that we are cognizant of the concerns and we're taking them seriously. And so that was, was another reason why I wanted to do the tour. Some of those safety concerns were visible from the tour, something the minister says she hopes to address soon. But the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union already has a strike certificate in hand. After the minister had walked away, we asked the union president, Kyle Wilson, for an update. She has been nothing but a breath of fresh air for the union to work with, and we're moving forward. We may not make the steps in one leap, but we're making incremental steps to resolve the issues. And so because of that, maybe it's lowering the tensions around BPL. Um, workers are starting to feel upbeat again. And just to have the minister come, put on a hard hat, put on the boots, and walk, and walk along with the leadership and be willing to see firsthand. But she has committed to do whatever is necessary to help the workers, and, I, and that's really a breath of fresh air. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. Thanks so much, Marlena. The president of Botswana wrapped up a state visit to the Bahamas on Thursday, the prime minister calling it not just an official visit, but the growth of a deeply rooted friendship between both nations. Davis says the administration is actively strength strengthening its foreign policy, and the visit is clear evidence of that. This administration is actively strengthening its foreign policy, and the visit of the president of Botswana stands as a clear evidence of this commitment. These engagements highlight our dedication to deepening existing ties and exploring new partnerships, underscoring our nation's proactive stance in the global community. Both leaders say the ties date back to 1999, when former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram visited the African nation. Botswana's president, Dr. Mogwitsi Masisi, says both countries have a lot in common, adding shared value and friendship work for both countries. We immersed in deep political dialogue where we exchanged views and agreed quite quickly after we explained the positions of each other to one another on voting patterns and support for each other's. Everything the Prime Minister asked of me in terms of Botswana's position, we yielded to. And so if we're to count for the vote, Botswana's vote is there, Bahamas. 
And what we asked of the Bahamas in terms of vote and ally, uh, alignment, we got. When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world. As $86 million worth of illegal pills are seized in Dubai. Plus, President Joe Biden's son, Hunter, indicted. Details on the three criminal counts he now faces. And from the region, Hurricane Lee unleashing strong winds and heavy rain on Bermuda. We have the details when our news returns. Hey, Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS bulk messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. What we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having Business in a Box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer service that we pride ourselves on. This is our news. Welcome back. We turn our attention now to stories making headlines across the world. Police in Dubai seized 86 million tablets of amphetamine known as Captagon, hitting in a shipment of doors and decorative building panels. They estimate the street value at just over $1 billion. The bust comes as sales of the drug have become a major issue in the Middle East. A surveillance video released by the Interior Ministry in the United Arab Emirates shows suspects trying to bring the Captagon tablet through Dubai's massive Jabal Ali port. Authorities did not identify the arrested suspects, but described their operation as an international criminal organization, without saying the source of the drugs. Hunter Biden, the son of President Joe Biden, has been indicted on three criminal counts related to his possession of a firearm. The charges in U.S. District Court in Delaware came weeks after the unexpected collapse of a deal with federal prosecutors. Biden, who has been open about his substance abuse struggles, is charged in two of the counts with lying about his illegal drug use in connection with his purchase of a Colt Cobra revolver. The third count charges him with possession of a firearm by a person who is an unlawful drug user. The two most serious counts carry maximum sentences of 10 years in prison and $250,000 in fines. The U.S. State Department says it is troubling that Russia is talking about cooperation with North Korea on programs that potentially would violate U.N. Security Council resolutions. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin met for a rare summit on Wednesday, at which they discussed military matters, the war in Ukraine, and possible Russian help for the secretive communist state's satellite program. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller. When you see Kim Jong-un uh, vowing to provide full, unconditional support for Russia's so-called sacred fight uh, to defend its security interests, which of course is not what it's doing with respect to the, the war in Ukraine, that of course is troubling. Uh, when you see what looks to be increased cooperation and probably military transfers, as we've said for some time, we have reason to believe they were uh, going to discuss military transfers, um, that is quite troubling and would potentially be in violation of multiple UN Security Council resolutions. And with respect to what any outcomes might be, we have taken a number of entity uh, actions already to sanction entities that have brokered arms sales between North Korea uh, 
and Russia, uh, and we won't hesitate to impose additional actions uh, if appropriate. Ballistic so missiles, exactly. Is that, is that a concern that, that Russia could be actively uh, yeah. um, promoting, uh, improving the, the North Korean uh, uh, Absolutely. That's why I rec or that's why that was what I was referring to in my reference to the multiple UN Security Council resolutions uh, 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 against North Korea's ballistic missile program, which Russia itself voted for and now could potentially be violating. Thousands of United Auto Workers members went on strike at three key plants after Detroit automakers failed to reach deals with the union by a Thursday night deadline. The facilities are GM's mid-size truck and full-size fan plant in Missouri, Ford's Ranger mid-size pickup and Bronco SUV plant in Michigan, and Stella Lantis's Jeep plant in Ohio. About 12,700 workers will be on strike, the union said. The UAW represents 146,000 workers. Hurricane Lee unleashed strong winds on Bermuda, bringing heavy rain, gusty winds, and sea swells, knocking out power to more than 4,000 customers. The Bermuda Weather Service says winds have steadily increased overnight as Lee crept closer to the island as a Category 1 hurricane. President of the Bermuda Electric Light Company said the gusty winds are causing outages, many of which are due to foliage and debris hitting wires, which causes the wires to come into contact and trip circuits. The Dominican Republic shut its entire border with neighboring Haiti at 6 this morning. It came a day after the president told reporters the drastic action would be taken amid a conflict over the construction of a water channel from a shared river. Santo Domingo is seeking the immediate halt of construction works, saying the closure would last as long as necessary, with backing from the country's military and police forces, though talks with the Haitian government would continue. The Dominican Republic has a strained relationship with borders, deporting tens of thousands fleeing worsening warfare in their country. Still to come in our news, today in history, find out interesting facts about the day that was September 15. Plus, Bahamians making waves at an international rural leadership workshop in Germany, hear their climate change action plan. And then in our news at 7.30, the minister's response. Transport Minister Jo Beth Colby Davis says she's not the only holdup when it comes to a bus fare increase. That's coming up when our news returns. Parliament is prorogued, ending the first legislative session of the Davis administration. It's been two years since the PLP won elections, ushering in a new government. On October 4th, a brand new session of Parliament begins with a new Governor General, a new speech from the throne, and with it, a blueprint for a new legislative agenda. Stay with Our News Nightly and follow rnews.bs for analysis and insight, and most of all, what's important to you. and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your message... Welcome back to our news. It's now time to turn our spotlight on events that shaped the day that was September 15th. Let's take a look. On this
biggest day in Bahamian history. In 2014, the gaming bill passed in the House of Assembly. The bill would lead to the regulation of web shops in the Bahamas, which had for years operated illegally. The bill was tabled in Parliament despite a referendum opinion poll of the previous year in which the majority of Bahamians voted against their legislation and regulation. The bill did not allow for Bahamians to gamble in casinos, but did have a provision which allowed the minister responsible for the gaming industry the ability to decide. And finally, in 2016, the Bahamar Claims Committee announced payout dates for former employees and creditors and said checks would be ready in less than two weeks. Then Labor Minister Shane Gibson said, despite criticism from the opposition, he never doubted the day would come. The contractors themselves never came to the press and doubted being paid. The employees themselves never came to the press and doubted being paid. There were persons who were hoping to capitalize on the time it took, the time from the announcement to the time when they would actually be paid. I never doubted it for one minute. Uh, we never flinched when we heard the leader of the opposition or the contractors association, pres current president or past president making noise because we knew what they were talking was nonsense. Two Bahamian professionals getting the chance to represent their ideals on agricultural and climate change to consultants and specialists from around the world in Europe. Our Joshua Williams has their story. After applying and being accepted, Senator Dr. Aresia Hebron Forbes and Sustainable Development Consultant Precious Fortune Thompson were selected to attend the 31st International Rural Leadership Workshop in Hershing, Germany. Thompson describes the importance of the Bahamas' contribution to finding solutions to global problems. The Bahamas is progressing a lot on the world stage as we are addressing like climate change, as we are looking at developing sustainable communities, sustainable food systems. Um, you know, we're really trying to transform and mitigate against disasters and so it was very important um, to learn from a lot of these persons because you know there's one thing when you have a seat at the table and they tell you okay you guys got to come up with solutions and ideas so let's fight these problems. For Senator Heber and Forbes the conference served as a networking opportunity. Ready started a collaborative process with some of the individuals. Uh, we plan on working on a project um, trying to get some grant funding for it. So it, it provided us with opportunities that we would not have had without being, you know, participating in the conference and trying to solve some of the actual global problems. Thompson's plan of action was one of seven chosen out of the 77 to be presented at the conference. It was shocking because it was voted on too. And I, I didn't know, I didn't expect it. And it, it just happened. And so... Um, it felt very good. Um, I had no intentions of speaking while I was in Hershing, um, but the minute I got there, I had to prepare. As for plans on applying what was learned in Germany for here back home. Action plan. So we're working on our action plan, and if we get at least some of them funded, we are hoping to come back and see how we can facilitate those processes. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. Thank you so much for that, Joshua. Now to watch that story again and for all of today's top stories, be sure to visit our news.bs. That does it for our news at 7. Joining us now is our Jamila Mizik with the latest headlines. Jamila, happy Friday. <laughs> happy Friday, Megan, to you as well. Thank you so much. A senior member of the Free National Movement is questioned by police. And our Women in Power series continues tonight. Here are your latest headlines. Brought in for questioning, new tonight in our news, live at 7.30. The Free National Movement second in command questioned by police as investigations continue into the alleged irregularities at the Beaches and Parks Authority. We'll tell you what we know, plus learning just like everyone else. Hear how students at the Garbentine's Primary Center for Autism are breaking societal barriers. Also, she's the second woman to serve as Speaker of the House of Assembly. Tonight, she talks one-on-one -on -one with our Sasha Lightborn. And later, if you love food and art, then you'll be excited to hear about the return of the Bahamar Culinary and Art Festival. Our Megan Shepherd speaks exclusively to one of the chefs about the signature event. That's coming up when our news returns. Collect verse access is as easy as 
Grab a clip, scan a clip. Open your camera app, focus on the QR code, and click the link that appears. You own your Clickverse experience. Take selfies, join the cultural referendum, and share with your friends. See content from local chefs, Olympic athletes, and cultural icons. Click is proud to be 50. Grab a click, scan a click. Get in the Clickverse today. Doctors Hospital is reimagined primary care. We've invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. Your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new, modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnosis and true personalized treatment begin. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the Doctors Hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshoss.com. Parliament is paroled, ending the first legislative session of the Davis administration. It's been two years since the PLP won elections, ushering in a new government. On October 4th, a brand new session of Parliament begins with a new Governor General, a new speech from the throne, and with it, a blueprint for a new legislative agenda. Stay with our news nightly and follow rnews.bs for analysis and insight, and most of all, what's important to you. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Jamila Mizek in for Italia Hall. Amid an ongoing investigation into the Bahamas Public Beaches and Parks Authority, senior brass of the Royal Bahamas Police Force telling our news, FNM Deputy Leader and former Chairman Shannon Don Cartwright was brought in for questioning. Our news understands police are in the advanced stages of the investigation into alleged irregularities at the authority. The former Minnis administration has come under fire from the Davis-led administration for how the authority was run. Four months after taking office, the government canceled all contracts at the authority, claiming external investigators found numerous lapses in internal controls. An audit revealed thousands were spent in the absence of real needs on the ground. It also revealed inconsistencies in the contract signatures, adding VAT returns were not filed. Amid the heavy criticism, Cartwright has defended his tenure, saying the allegations were laughable. Meanwhile, a man accused of getting his 15-year-old stepdaughter drunk and molesting her is behind bars tonight. The 39-year-old customs officer's name has been withheld to protect the child's identity. The incident allegedly happened on September 9th. The stepfather didn't have to plead to charges of unlawful sexual intercourse with a dependent and cruelty to children when he stood before Assistant Chief Magistrate Subasola Swain. Bail was denied and he's next to in court on November 11th to receive voluntary bill of indictment papers. Switching gears now, bus drivers are speaking out again and calling for a fare increase. They say it's been a while since they heard from the minister and they're asking her to meet with them. Bertheny McDermott reports. Months after meeting with Transport Minister Jo Beth Colby Davis, the Bahamas Unified Bus Drivers Union say they're still waiting to hear from her on a fare increase for the industry. Union Public Relations Officer Samuel Taylor says the last time they heard from her was back in May. We are still waiting on the minister to meet us in reference to the bus fares going up. She is taking a back bench and haven't came back to us as yet. The union recently released a memo saying bus fares would increase. The Ministry of Transport released a statement saying no increase has been approved by Cabinet. However, according to Taylor, some customers haven't been mandated to pay the suggested increase. When we came back from the pandemic, persons were paying us $150, some were paying us $2, some were paying the regular fare, $1.25. At this point, persons are still paying the same thing, $125, $150, $2. So with that notice going up, persons just put more effect inside it. More persons are going with the $150 and the $2 because they're still saying that we need that increase. 
But what's making matters worse is the increased cost of living. Taylor says the cost of diesel has gone up again along with other necessities. Fuel was at 472 and it went up 70 cents. So now it's now hitting us really back again in the in the pockets. So we we back back just like we're in the pandemic again. And prices are going up and up and up. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Thanks, Berthony. Well, tonight the transport minister is responding. She says the question of whether or not bus fares can go up to 25 cents will have to go through a town hall meeting before it can be approved. We're supposed to have a transport um, transformation public uh, town hall. I think that's coming up next week. I'm not too sure of the date, but the media will get more information. That's going to be a conversation with the public and the bus drivers and how we can transform the industry. And that was a condition of us getting the increase for them that was set by the cabinet. And so I'm trying to fulfill that condition to make sure we hear from the public and we're able to provide a plan um, going forward to a better transformative industry of transportation. So they should, they should be able to get something as soon as we're done with those public town halls. But bus drivers have been complaining about how long the issue is taking to be resolved and in recent weeks said they were insulted by ministers suggestion to report bus drivers who increase their bus fares. The minister's response. I know their frustrations. I understand we are dealing with um, increase in prices all around, and so everyone has concerns. I don't take it personal. I'm doing my best. I'm working as hard as I can, and um, we, we are making headway. Uh, it, it isn't just me that has to make these decisions, and so I try my best to push as hard as I can to get things done for them. Um, and so I think we're going to be in a better space once we have that first town hall, because everyone will have a fuller appreciation of what we're trying to do, and they'll have a greater appreciation of what the public actually expects from the industry as well and then we can go forward together in a partnership and 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 be able to transform and bring better transportation through the bus and sector all right well the tropics are heating up again but what does it mean for us meteorologist greg thompson is in the weather center with a first look at weather greg yeah, thanks, Jimmy. And welcome, everybody, for a quick check on conditions outside our studios and around the islands. It's 86 degrees outside right now, a few clouds, and it is warm temperatures, making it feel like 94 degrees. And your winds are now out of the north-northeast at 7 miles per hour. Radar and satellite composite, quiet across our area. We don't have much in terms of any significant weather. A few isolated to spotty showers across the extreme northern islands. There is a weak front that's trying to drop across the uh, northern portion of Florida. Should get just to the north of the Bahamas and stall, but it will lend support to some showers and thunderstorms across the extreme northern islands. The remainder of the island should be clear and cool for the rest of the day and into tomorrow. That's a quick check on conditions around the island. Stick with us. A look at the tropics is still to come. Still to come on our news, the former DNA leader weighs in following the Office of the Prime Minister's announcement to cancel cabinet briefings. His comments straight ahead. Plus, our PLP Women in Power series continues tonight as our Sasha Lightborn has a one-on-one -on -one with the second woman to sit in the seat as Speaker of the House of Assembly. And hear how the Garvin Times Primary Center for Autism has been changing the lives of students living with autism. That's coming up when our news returns. Parliament is paroled, ending the first legislative session of the Davis administration. It's been two years since the PLP won elections, ushering in a new government. On October 4th, a brand new session of Parliament begins with a new Governor General, a new speech from the throne, and with it, a blueprint for a new legislative agenda. Stay with our news nightly and follow rnews.bs for analysis and insight and most of all, what's important to you. and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, 
We help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS Bulk Messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Office of the Prime Minister announced this week the cancellation of cabinet briefings with media on Tuesdays, saying media would be able to ask questions during the weekly Office of the Prime Minister briefing on Thursdays. Former State Minister of Immigration Branville McCartney says what's happening is not shocking. Not surprising. It's the MO of the PLB. Well, you believe that transparency was the order of the day? Look at the history, man. That history, McCartney says, is a pattern of getting Bahamians on their side just to turn on their just to turn on their word once in power. Look at the history of the VLP. <laughs> Sweet you up, party you, make you feel good, tell you what you want here, trap you, get you involved. You vote for them. And then the true colors come out. She's governed with an iron fist and has had some controversial back and forths with the opposition. Only the second woman to sit in the seat as Speaker of the House of Assembly, Patricia DeVos speaks to our Sasha Lightborn in our continuing series on PLP Women in Power. Politics can bring both opportunities as well as challenges. It's a strong sentiment shared by House Speaker Patricia DeVoe, who shared that advice for any woman considering frontline politics. As a newcomer to the role, she has spent the last two years in office, gaining first-hand experience of the trials that come with the leadership journey, her guidance extending beyond those sentiments. Build a strong network. You're gonna need that because I've seen things um, you're happy today and tomorrow you're the villain. Educate yourself. You want to look at global and as well as national issues, policies, legislature, and educate yourself on the background of politics. And last but not least, um, embrace your aspiration. Tivo was elected House Speaker following her win as Bamboo Town MP in the 2021 general elections. And now two years in, she says things have gotten easier while candidly opening up about the highs and lows of governing. The lows are, let me say, if I could bring control to the boys club. No, 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 no. That's what you're doing now, right? You're doing right now, right? Let me say that. Um, I, I, I rarely get issues out of the females but if I can if I can get a, a balance for them to strike to know that this side can work in conjunction with that side the government and the opposition can, can come together and maintain a balance to move the country forward I think that would be a wonderful feat for any speaker. As for representing her constituents, the speaker was glowing when she talked about the grace she's been extended. As she says, they understand the critical role she's been called to serve. I wish that I could get more um, camaraderie from some of my members to help to, for the development and the forward mobility of my constituency. 
Um, some of them are very open door with me, but some of them I'm still, I'm still waiting on some of those things to be fixed. But all in all, the speaker says she's become diligent in finding balance. It's just so many different facets of what is required to be a member of parliament based on what you do here in the House of Assembly. And so you have to maintain that balance. You have to be strong. Reporting for our news, I'm Sasha Lightborn. All right, thanks for that, Sasha. Since 1999, the Center for Autism at Garvin Tynes Primary School has been creating a safe space to allow children living with autism to learn just like everyone else. I spoke to team leader Leonel Flores, who told me that the unit not only caters to meeting the students' individual needs, but also building on their unique strengths and skills. Basically, the unit is designed to help the th children to, to not only cope in society, but to thrive in society. We understand that our children learn differently than a typical child. So um, we understand that, that there's beauty in the differences. So here in the Center for Autism, we want to make sure that we provide them with skills to empower them for the future. Autism spectrum disorder is a neurological and developmental disorder that affects how people interact with others, communicate, learn, and behave. But what does learning with autism look like? For some of our students, they need coping mechanisms. It's not that they can't do the work, but they need some scaffold to, to be able to achieve the goal. They may be overstimulated with the colors inside the room. So um, one of the things that we've um, kind of introduced last year was we have um, came together with corporate sponsors such as Atlantis to um, create a sensory room where we can de-stimulate them so that they can be in the, in, the, in the classroom and function a little bit better. He says while there's still a long way to go, they are on the right track to meeting the needs of their students. And this year, they've set out goals to teach the students how to be independent. To be able to take the students to the food store, let them have money in their hands and be able to spend it, um, to go to the washer house and, and you know what I mean, be able to wash their own clothes using the washing machine, to go to the bank, take an ATM card, put it in, and you know what I mean, be able to collect their own money as opposed to being dependent on their parents. And um, the ultimate goal basically is for us to, to promote inclusion. Our goal is to make sure that, that, that when we see students with a different ability, a disability, that we don't look at them weird or strange. And I think that's what we're trying to do here at Galvantine. Jazz Chisholm gives back to youth baseballer John Quell Jones is in the WNBA playoffs. Don't go anywhere. Our sports is coming up next. Plus, it's the return of the Bahama Culinary and Arts Festival. And our Megan Shepherd has a sneak peek into all the action. We have the details when our news returns. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope. Parliament is prorogued, ending the first legislative session of the Davis administration. It's been two years since the PLP won elections, ushering in a new government. On October 4th, a brand new session of Parliament begins with a new Governor General, a new speech from the throne, and with it, a blueprint for a new legislative agenda. Stay with our news nightly and follow our news.bs for analysis and insight, and most of all, what's important to you. and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS Bulk Messaging. 
call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we provide. Today's sports update is sponsored by Michelob Ultra, distributed in the Bahamas by Jimmy's Wines and Spirits. This is our news. Welcome back. Jazz Chisholm launches a new youth league and Jonquel Jones leads her team into the postseason. Tej Adderley is here with a check on sports. Tej. Thanks, Jamila. Good evening. Happy Friday. I'm Tej Adderley here to take you into the weekend with some sports. Last week, Jazz Chisholm launched his foundation. He's already making an impact on Bahamian baseball. Miami Marlins center fielder Jazz Chisholm announced the launch of the Jazz Chisholm Foundation Little League today. The league will provide over 200 boys and girls in New Providence with the training and equipment to succeed at baseball. This league will provide a significant boost to youth baseball in the Bahamas, but according to Jazz, he has a lot more planned. Jazz cited rapper Snoop Dogg's youth league success in producing football prospects in L.A. when he talked about his league. Hopefully he can do the same thing over here. Moving things over to the court, John Carl Jones and the Liberty have dominated the competition for the entire regular season, finishing with a 32-8 record. They begin their quest for a title this evening. The New York Liberty are playing the Washington Mystics tonight in their best of three series in the first round of the WNBA playoffs. The Liberty, led by the inside presence of Jones, along with the sharpshooting of Brianna Stewart and Sabrina Ionescu, are the heavy favorites to take out the 19 and 21 Mystics. Five for the upset, the Mystics are led by longtime stalwart Elena Deladon and our running mate Brittany Sykes. Be sure to check back with our social media pages for those results. Before we go, the Prefontaine Classic is happening this weekend in Eugene, Oregon. If any Bahamians do anything, we'll be the first to let you know. That's all for sports this week. I'm Tage Adderley. It's the weekend. Still ahead on our news tonight, the second Bahamar Culinary and Arts Festival is weeks away. Our Megan Shepherd tells us how things are heating up. And got plans for the weekend? Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended weather forecast. That's coming up when our news returns. Parliament is prorogued, ending the first legislative session of the Davis administration. It's been two years since the PLP won elections, ushering in a new government. On October 4th, a brand new session of Parliament begins with a new Governor General, a new speech from the throne, and with it, a blueprint for a new legislative agenda. Stay with Our News Nightly and follow rnews.bs for analysis and insight, and most of all, what's important to you. and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Don't spend hours sending individual messages to your customers. Use SMS messaging instead. With Cable Bahamas Business Solutions SMS Messaging, you can send personalized messages to hundreds or even thousands of recipients instantly. It's quick, effortless, and cost-effective. Plus, it ensures that your messages are delivered directly to your customers' cellular phones, guaranteeing higher engagement. Save time and boost your outreach with SMS bulk messaging. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. 
We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having Business in a Box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Welcome back to our news. We are one day away from the weekend and the temperatures aren't the only thing heating up. Greg is back in the Weather Center with an extended look. Greg. Yeah, thanks, Jamila, and welcome back, everybody, for our final check of weather. We are tracking tropics, still have a couple of systems out there we're continuing to monitor. There's Ali and, of course, there's Margo. We have newly formed tropical depression number 15 that is in the open Atlantic. Winds up to 35 miles per hour will continue to track towards the uh, northwest. Look like it's headed towards the Bermuda area. Those Bermuda, uh, Bermudians, so is that the proper name? They have uh, been in the crosshair for these systems over the course of the last couple of weeks in the Atlantic. Of course, uh, this system will pose no problems to us here in the Bahamas. And then, of course, we have Margo still churning out there. It's doing a bit of a loop, uh, 65 mile per hour winds, a very potent tropical storm, but we'll continue to track into the open Atlantic, approaching the Azores over the next couple of days. And then we have Lee, which has moved well north of us. We're still getting some swells affecting the Bahamas, but those swells are starting to subside and Lee will move into the Canadian Maritime. Here at home, we have a ridge of high pressure in charge. That ridge of high pressure will continue to provide us with some beautiful weather for the rest of the week and into the weekend. And we expect that those uh, high pressure systems to continue to stay with us through the early part of next week. Taking a look at that system open out in the open Atlantic uh, has about a, well, a high chance for forming into a a hurricane as it continues to track towards the uh, northwest and as I mentioned it's headed towards the Bermuda area for the early part of next week. Boating conditions for all areas tonight to tomorrow. Small craft caution still in effect. We still have those rip currents and we have those uh, lingering swells. Winds will be north east to east at 10 to 15 knots east, 2 to 4 feet near shore but they will be building up to 7 feet offshore in some northeasterly swells and that will be mainly along the Atlantic exposures. Your high tide will be at 9 p.m. tonight. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your extended forecast, quiet weather throughout the remainder of the weekend and into early part of next week. There is a frontal boundary that should be lingering just in the north of us. That could lend us some showers and some isolated thunderstorms early part of, well, middle part of next week. But temperatures will be near the 90 degree mark during the daytime and the upper 70s to 80s at night. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe night and have a great weekend, everybody. All right, thanks, Greg. We are one week closer to the second Bahamar Culinary and Arts Festival, slated for October 27th through the 29th. Our Megan Shepherd sat down with Chef Garrett Bow of Marcus Fish and Chop House, who tells her that last year was all about getting their footing. This year, things are heating up, and attendees have lots of exciting events to look forward to. Last year was good. Um, we had a lot of different events. Um, we had the expo, we had demos, um, we had a lot of local vendors in. Um, this year we're doing it on a larger scale, so we, we have more vendors in, um, more chefs, and we had more events too, so we we're spreading it out. The Welcome Beach Party is going to be amazing. Um, we have more celebrity chefs in-house. We have Carla Hall, um, Jeffrey Zakarian, um, 
so much more. Chef Marcus is here, Chef Simeon Hall, our local chef. So we're very excited about it. Last year's event was so successful and exciting that guests had an impromptu after party. Bo says the message was received loud and clear and they've prepared an official after party this time around. Well, we're looking forward to hosting that up here in the space. Um, Saturday, the signature events with the chefs. Um, so it's the diner round and Sunday is just demos and more demos. Although she's been a chef for some 12 years now, she says it is always exciting to collaborate with other local and international chefs. She adds that culinary students from the University of the Bahamas have also been invited for a unique learning experience. I'm excited to be a part of this event and to participate. Um, it's a great networking event. Um, the University of the Bahamas students, the culinary students, they come to the demos and they see what we're doing. And it's very exciting for me. I feel very proud um, to at least talk with them and just share my experience with them because they see me as a Bahamian and I'm here doing these things. And it's just to encourage them. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. Awesome. Thanks for that, Megan. And thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Jamila Mizik. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a wonderful weekend.